there's one thing that plants and animals cannot do. We cannot make minerals. Our dogs cannot make minerals. Therefore, we do need to supplement them. And when we supplement minerals, I've seen the biggest changes in medicine. That's one of the reasons why some people say, you know, I started giving green mint or some other mineral supplement, and, and I've seen this transformation. It is just because your dog was running on such a deficit, they were missing building blocks, and the reactions were not, not happening, right? And disease comes on. What is the best source of minerals for your dog? I'm only going to tell you how I see it. Uh, I think that there is no absolute truth. Those of you who get bones, it is kind of correct because in the ideal environment, in animals that would be raised grazing on pastures that would be undepleted, they would be able to move from place to place and get the whole spectrum of nutrients. Bones actually would be sufficient source of minerals. The problem is that these animals are getting deficient feet and therefore bones of animals that are depleted can be depleted. So then there's bone broth and bone broth is actually interesting because it's become very popular. And I was very surprised when I started reading some studies, learning that bone broth is actually not a good source of minerals and some plant-based sources are actually better because when we boil the minerals, they become indigestible and they don't absorb, even if they're in the broth. And they've done research and you can look it up online, but it's really interesting. So bone broth, some people see difference and there may be something that we don't know, we don't know about bone broth, but it definitely it does not seem to be a good source of minerals. Roundup minerals, you know, they're like ground up rock. They have to be processed. They have to be dissolved in water and processed by plants or, or, or in the environment to actually get in our system and be digestible. There is very low digestibility. I have started using plant-based sources of minerals, alga calcarea, about 10 years ago, because we know the oceans have abundance of minerals, but we need to also remember that oceans do have toxicity. So when it comes to animals in the ocean, they usually gather toxicity, but plants don't because they actually, their lifespan is very, very low. And there is this algae, alga calcarea, that um, gathers the minerals in its roots. And the reason for that is that it actually doesn't want to float away and it evolved to actually make itself heavy by gathering the minerals in the roots. Many, many years back, farmers started feeding this algae to horses and cows in Brazil. And they discovered that these animals were doing really well and they were healthy and they had shiny coats. And basically they were seeing what we were seeing in our dogs when we started giving them plant-based minerals. So that's how alga calcarea was discovered. And uh, then it started being used in uh, humans for osteoporosis and supplementing minerals in that area. And it worked really well. And then we started using it in Greenman because uh, I was looking, I was asked actually by one of the raw food manufacturers in Vancouver to come up with the replacement for bones because bones, while they could be good source of minerals, they may be deficient, and they also sometimes harbor heavy metals and toxins. They deposit these. So the pet food company asked me to prepare a supplement a replacement for dogs that don't eat bones, or if we don't put bones in the food, you know, to supplement all the minerals. So then we have omega-3s, and omegas have been actually, or were, the most difficult supplements for me to understand and source, because there's such a complexity of... Um, issues with the omegas. I see most dog lovers actually using fish-based oil. And fish would be wonderful for as a source of omegas. However, we are starting to see unbearable, I'm just going to say unbearable doses or levels of heavy metals. And also overfishing is a problem. So when we look at toxicity and also sustainability, Fish is not an ideal source. And to be honest, um, you know, I used to eat fish in the past quite a bit. The ideal, the only ideal fish would be freshwater fish somewhere from a pristine environment. Definitely not tilapia from Thailand or China. And if you saw the water where it's grown and the pollution in the water and all that, it's, uh, it's crazy. 
when I was sourcing, when I tried to source um, omega threes, I looked into plants again because I thought that would be great. And then we started looking at one source after another and learned that most of these sources actually have GMO patents in them. That most of the algae that are on the market are to GMO and it does not need to be listed. And that's the crazy part. So then I go, okay, let's go to krill because krill is good and you know it's healthy and it's small and it has a short lifespan. And then I learn how severely overfished it is and how it threatens the whale population, the beautiful whales that I showed you in the picture. And then I was lost. I didn't really know where to go. I was fed up, I was tired. And then we came across a source of omega oil from calamari. And there are two um, important omega-3 uh, fatty acids. One of them is called EPA, and that's for inflammation, addressing inflammation, cell repair. And the other one is DHA, which is good for brain function and nerve repair and all that. And calamari has a sufficient amount of both of these. And there is another news, good news. And I'll tell you about it before, sorry, after, after I tell you why I haven't listed omega-6 and omega-9s. Omega-6 and omega-9s are sufficient in abundant in food. You really do not need to supplement them. But omega-3s are not abundant, and those are the ones that you have to supplement to make sure that there is enough of them, and they balance the omega-6 and 9s. This kind of gives you an idea how much mercury is in different fish. If you love eating fish, or if you love eating tuna, be careful. I have seen dogs that have high mercury level seizuring. I actually have seen Sky's sister, uh, my friend's dog, seizuring. She was getting a lot of fish. I couldn't convince my friends not to. And she had epilepsy attack. And when I treat dogs with epilepsy, I would actually measure their mercury levels. And I have seen the levels in dogs that seizure usually being higher. Again, that would be a wonderful study. If you have any colleagues who would love to spend time with studies, I, I have so many ideas. But this graph basically shows you that the higher on the food chain, the worse it is. So this is one chart, and then there is another chart, but that's good news chart. You know, with fewer fish in the oceans, what happens with the calamari? Well, the population has exploded since the 50s because fish eats calamari, and if there's not enough fish, then calamari is a heyday, right? They have a party. So we actually, by harvesting calamari, we are not harming the environment the way we would harm the environment if we harvest um, fish or krill. So this is the reason why I myself take calamari-based oil and why I give it to my patients and my own dogs. Probiotics. Make sure that your probiotics, your dog's probiotics, are canine-specific because the flora for dogs is different that it has prebiotics as well, the, 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 the part of the, the supplement that actually feeds the bacteria, the probiotic bacteria, the good bacteria. I like to make supplements certified organic as often as possible. It is a great digestive support and it is great immune support. Now, I realize as I'm talking about probiotics that I forgot to talk to you about or make a slide for essential amino acids. And I have combined the essential amino acids and the minerals together in one component or one supplement. And the reason for that is that it actually works really well together. The essential amino acids boost the reactions, the 37 billion reactions a second. And uh, spirulina is an amazing source of um, amino acids because um, it is full and complete when it comes to complete, not complete, but complete. It has all the full spectrum. It has full spectrum of amino acids, and uh, that's why I love it so much. NASA approved it as a complete protein or amino acid so source for astronauts. So now we have detox, and we'd like to, I'd like to show you what toxins actually do. I'm going to use the airplanes again. Let's go to the next slide. Airplane, pure airplane, all the elements are in. It flies beautifully. And what toxins do, they could be compared to the next slide. So imagine that if you attach, I actually was making this slide and I think that it, it got distorted a little bit, but I was making this slide in the morning. I thought, what could I put on a plane that would look ridiculous? And you know, if you attach a plane that you come to the airport and there would be a plane that would have like 20 bikes on and, and some, some towers, metal towers on and 
into uh, like uh, tennis rackets on the wings and all that stuff, and it would be all stacked up. And, and would you fly in it? <laughs> Probably not, right? <laughs> it would be ridiculous. It would not fly really well. And this is what toxins do to our body and our dog's body. Let's go to the next slide. Now, what is the difference between this slide and the previous one? I think that you probably noticed there is a bird, right? Now, I couldn't find a better bird, but you know that when there is a bird going through the engine, that, that can actually crash the plane. That happened to the aircraft uh, that crashed in Hudson River in New York. So there is a point where the plane cannot handle the insult, and there is a point where a dog's body cannot handle the insults. And that would be the end of the life. So detox is basically removing all the bits and pieces that don't belong. That's detox. And it's really hard to know exactly what is in your dog's body or not. But we will be able to, I'll be able to show you that there is a way of actually getting an idea. Now, I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist to put the conventional treatment methods in here. You know, in conventional treatments, we don't really worry whether there are bikes, uh, bikes attached to the plane and the tennis rockets and the tires. We don't really care. We just put more toxins in the body, right? We don't really worry about whether the body, you know, we don't really worry about whether a dog is seizuring or not because of mercury. We basically put him on anti-seizure drugs. So suddenly the body needs to deal with the bike and the rocket and the tower and the anti-seizure drugs. So this is conventional medicine. It is kind of crazy what we are doing these days. It's, it's not much better than, than mercury purging, bloodletting. And I'm not necessarily discounting the modern medicine that is really helpful and useful in emergencies and you know, situations where it's really useful, but it should not be considered the only standard. So if you wanted to know how to cleanse your dog, you can just go to my website and search for a cleanse page. Just do cleanse or cleanse page and it will come up and um, it will show you, it will give you idea what, what to use and how to do cleanse in a dog.